So, Kaim, you said something about the Gospel Revival show in Long Island. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yes, that was that was really a wonderful experience for me. I, uh, I had moved to Long Island, and I was, I was uh, very comfortable there, and I had started uh, doing more music and, and uh, uh, composing and practicing in the house. <clears throat> Just let me go back for a moment. Mm -hmm. Back in 1976, mm -hmm. when I first met John Hammond Sr., mm -hmm. and he listened to my first two songs that I, that I played for him, he sat down. He was a tall man, very thin, Brooks Brothers suit, mm -hmm. uh, an elder. And he took the tape off and he handed it back to me and he said to me, straight faced, you haven't sung much since your bar mitzvah. <laughs> That's a good well, one. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, was, I was about 32 at the time and I was a very, <laughs> very cocksure guy, you know, and I was already a successful trial attorney and mm. I was doing the cabaret mm. and working on East 15th and Reno Sweeney's and Greenwich Village. I mean, I was a, I was a solo act. You haven't sung much since your bar mitzvah. Mm. A Jewish boy is bar mitzvah when they're 13. Mm. Right. It kind of brings me back to when I was studying for my bar mitzvah. I had a private tutor, a rabbi. Right. He used to come in with a cane, hunched over, and my parents hired him because I was such a dummy. <laughs> and after a week or two of working with me, he finally says to me, Howard, I've seen better heads on beer. <laughs> <laughs> study, Howard, study. Well, John Hammond Sr. told me I hadn't sung much this far, but Mitzvah, I think the rabbi and he mm. got together and God, <laughs> God planned that. He planned that for my life so I would be disciplined. <laughs> I needed discipline. I was, uh, I was too high and I was like Paul, man. I was flying on my, on my carnal nature, you know, successful yeah. and, and uh, hmm. written up in uh, Cosmopolitan and the ladies' man to some extent. He had to break me a little bit, so he gave me my rabbi. Mm. You. I've seen better heads on beer study, mm. and he gave me John Hammond Sr., who said, "You haven't sung much since your bar mitzvah." Mm. Anyway, I told, I asked Mr. Hammond, "What should I do, Mr. Hammond?" He said, S "Go out and sing." I said, "Where?" He said, "Sing any place, wherever you are, sing." Mm. Well, seven years later, after singing and singing and singing on the streets, I was singing at the ocean in Mendocino. I was singing wherever in the bathrooms, wherever I could, exercising my voice studying the Bible, singing. I was in New York doing the record project back in 84, mm. and that's where Forever, Forevermore comes from, and those uh, MP3s that I'm offering to the world free. Mm -hmm. I paid for in a very good studio that was run by the Mafia. They had the best studios in New York. Anyway, I called John Hammond Sr., who I hadn't spoken to in seven years, Mark, mm. from the lobby of this fancy uh, uh, office building he was in on on East 58, 9th Street, <clears throat> and I said to him, no appointment, no phone call, Mr. Hammond, this is, he said, before I announced my name, and this is, this is the truth, he said, come up, Howard, I only have 15 minutes. Mm. Well, I raced up the stairs, forget about the elevator. I was in good shape, so I ran up the stairs, got to his office, I had my little cassette, and he motioned for me to put it on his machine, he was on the phone, he hung up the phone, he said, start it, I started it. I sat back in my chair and I was praying, Lord, <clears throat> all I want him to say is that he likes it, Lord. That's all I want, that's all I'm here for. And he said, I like it. Mm. So the seven years and the practice and the discipline that I had from John Hammond Sr., may he rest in peace, mm. was so important <clears throat> for me to be a, a gospel singer for the Lord. The Lord took John Hammond Sr. and put him in my life so that I could be disciplined by mm -hmm. an elder. And I took it. I took it and I went out and did exactly what he said I should do. Mm -hmm. And when I went back, he said, I like it. And not only that, but he said, next week I'm going to sign you to a contract, make a, an appointment with my secretary. Mm -hmm. And that was the appointment that I broke. Right. And I was told I would never have another chance. And mm -hmm. I, I said, I understand that, but please, my best regards to Mr. Hammond, tell him I really appreciate mm. his kindness and his and his professional help. Mm. And mm. I went back to California, it was the last time I ever saw him. Yes. But going back to Long Island, when I started my ministry, uh, gospel ministry in Long Island, I went to a black Baptist church, mm -hmm. and I used to worship there on Sundays, and they had an unbelievable choir, 
36 singers and three lead singers that were terrific. Dora Pritchett, Diane Westbrook, and this guy Benny. Mm -hmm. They took a shine to me. And the next thing I knew, I was emceeing this 36 member gospel choir mm. from the Black Baptist Church in Bridgehampton, Long Island. And we went into a place called Hampton Bays. I booked a show at the Methodist Church in Hampton Bays. And we did that show and the, and the church was rocking. I mean, the pews were moving back and forth. It was unbelievable. <laughs> one of the gals, Dora Pritchard, she sang a song and one of the lines I'll never forget. Nobody told me the road would be easy, but I can't believe he brought me this far. No, I can't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Mm. Diane Westbrook sang a song, and one of the lines that I remember from her song was, I trade a lifetime for just one day in paradise. the Lord. I hope that they all are with the Lord one day. I know they will be. That was a great experience for my gospel revival shows that I started on Long Island, New York. So God, God, once again, I'm going to go back to our Lord, our Savior, and God our Father, God the Holy Spirit. Throughout my life, I can see that thread. Even when I was a little boy now, that comes right to now with Mark and myself and the brethren on YouTube and this experience that we're all having together. It's all predestined. It's all foreknown to God. Mm. And God has called us and God has chosen us and God has elected us to be with each other personally like we have had this blessing twice now. Mm. And on YouTube for you and for myself and for the rest of the brethren to share with one another. Mm. It gives us a chance to exercise our faith. Mm. It gives us a chance to exercise the gifts that God has given us. Someone makes a video, another person recites a thank you on the video. They're exercising a gift. That's a gift of encouragement. Mm -hmm. That comes from God, that comes from the Holy Spirit. It's a gift from the Spirit, mm. from Jesus Christ who died for us. He gave us a gift, we gotta use that gift. Amen. And we can't be slandering people, and we can't be putting people down. We got to love them. The Lord said, love your brothers and sisters. This is going to be the sign that you're one of mine. It's love. Without love, there's nothing that sticks with the ministry. Nothing that sticks without love. Love is now and love is forever. Love will go up with us and all our faithful works. But without love, it's just a bad sounding symphony. Mm that has a lot of noise and a lot of fury, mm. but no substance. I can't think of a better way to end. Um, I was blessed by this. Um, my your blessing. Words are all, your my, words, my <laughs> blessing. Your words are always an encouragement, man, and we got to get together again one year from now. No, right. that's so long. I want to see you sooner. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I can't wait. Right. <laughs> They'll start singing now. Um, so, <laughs> we're going to... I thank Cat, the Abalone Kid once again, and um, I'll be with him pretty soon. We'll make another video, and we'll share it with you guys. And um, I want to say something. I want to give Mark a blessing. I know all of you appreciate his wonderful ministry. He's such a faithful man of God. He knows Scripture so well. I know. I've tested him out, and and he he's heads and shoulders above <laughs> me when it comes to re recitation of oh, no. chapter and verse. Yeah, he's he's one of the best. Bible students that I've ever come into contact with. And he's learned from, from, from great Bible teachers that uh, hopefully some of you will get a chance to, to learn from as well. And MacArthur, and John MacArthur, who he goes to church with, and J. Vernon McGee, mm. who has passed to the Lord, but his ministry goes on around the world in 200 languages. Mm. He's a wonderful, wonderful teacher. J. Vernon McGee, M-C-G-E-E, -E. Mm. and John MacArthur, who we know still with us. Praise the Lord. He's, he's kept McCarthy here, but he took McGee home. Amen. Amen. God bless you.